and Kelly, we have a lot to get to this morning. And here to help me break down what's making the rounds today, NBC's own Savannah Guthrie and Craig Melvin. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I like that. I wanted to do like a Silvio's Lamato thing. Hi, guys. Who's so it's, where? Who's what do we do? Who's sick that? So we, <laughs> Savannah and I missed our, our weekly uh Time together yesterday, so this no is going to be like it was Savens Day. So we're going to think of Thursday, Anna. Oh, <laughs> what do you I think like about, it. about it's that? It's really catching on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we just text no. each other with it yes. every day. Okay, and also welcome to Craig. Mel. Melvers Day. Melvers Day. Have to work on it. We'll work on it. Okay, but we have to start with the latest news about this actress, Asia Argento. And the reason, you, I'd never heard of her, frankly, before this whole Me Too movement, but what's happening with her is important. It's important because it, it, it's, well, you'll see why. The actress became one of the most vocal women in the Me Too movement. First, she accused Harvey Weinstein, which charges he denied. And then she spoke out in fierce terms at the Cannes Film Festival and condemned predatory behavior in Hollywood, looking around the room saying, you know who you are, this is still happening. Well, earlier this week, a report hit that right around the time she was condemning the folks at Khan, she was paying off a man who she had had sex with when he was 17, a man she had known since she was a ch since he was a child. And now for the first time, we're hearing from him. NBC's own Kristen Dahlgren has the very latest on this case. Watch this. This morning, Jimmy Bennett breaking his silence on his sexual assault claims against Asia Argento. The former child actor saying he was too ashamed and afraid to open up until now. In his statement to NBC News, Bennett writes, I was underage when the event took place, and I tried to seek justice in a way that made sense to me at the time. Bennett referring to the nearly $400,000 cash settlement he sought from Argento, as first reported by the New York Times Sunday. No! The two first met on the set of a 2004 film in which Bennett played Argento's son. Their alleged sexual encounter happening nine years later in 2013 at a California hotel, according to a notice of intent to sue cited by the Times. Bennett, now 22, saying, At the time, I believe there was still a stigma to being in the situation as a male in our society. I didn't think that people would understand the event that took place from the eyes of a teenage boy. While Argento has denied allegations of a sexual relationship with Bennett, she did, however, acknowledge the settlement funded by her then-boyfriend, the late Anthony Bourdain. But these text messages obtained by TMZ seem to tell a different story. NBC News has not independently obtained or verified the messages, which the website says were exchanged between Argento and an unidentified friend this week, discussing her relationship with Bennett. In one message, Argento reportedly writes, I had sex with him. It felt weird. I didn't know he was a minor until the shakedown letter. Another text appears to make an attempt to justify the age difference between Argento and Bennett. The message reading, When I was 17, I was with a 33-year-old man for years. Argento has yet to comment on these potentially damning text messages. Further flipping the script on the actress who helped lead the way for major change in Hollywood and beyond. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, it's pretty... Look, well, we haven't, all, we haven't a diagram like what, who, ha, what? I mean, look, we haven't verified those text messages right. independently. Right. But if those are real, they've got her dead to rights. If those are real, they got her dead to rights. She comes out and says on Tuesday, I never had any sexual relationship with Bennett. And then the, the text gets released yesterday saying I had sex with him. Um, I didn't know he was a minor until the shakedown later. I mean, if that's true, then she's been lying to us. Well, it's also hard to believe she didn't know that he was a minor since she was in a film with him. You know, when, when he, he was, was seven. Right, right. So and we should also point out that Argento, who was apparently supposed to appear at some sort of uh, event, has canceled that appearance amid all of this scrutiny. So yeah. be interested to hear what she has to say now that this is this new information has come to light. You know, it's the Asia, Asia Argento was not in the New York Times piece on Harvey Weinstein. They went they went with other accusers. And you have to wonder, because hmm. these news organizations do do a pretty good job of vetting. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's one of those... But if the New York Times had known that, why wouldn't they have reported that? Well, but that? maybe they just had questions about, about her truth and honesty. I mean, you, you have to wonder, because if, let's, if she gets accused by this guy, and it's true, and she knows it's true, to come out and boldly say, I never had sex with him, 
that says something about her character. I well, mean, and the worst it's thing not about even it, a, like, yeah. it's none of your business or it's more complicated than you know or the truth will come out. It's like, he's a liar is basically what she said. And the very next day we see these text messages suggesting she's the one mis misleading. Yeah, I never understand how people th who know what they did would then go on and say, first of all, lie and say they didn't right. do it, but then even to go and stand up at the Cannes Film Festival and make such an impassioned statement against, you know, abuse in Hollywood and going after those who are powerless. And saying you know who you are. With the knowledge you have. I mean, I just don't get that. Is that a lack of self-awareness? Is yeah. that, I just, I mean, she's an actress. I guess maybe that's what it is. The but it's hubris. What's, but what's unfortunate is that you don't want this apparently bad example right. um, to color a movement that's really important. Right. Exactly. Women right. speaking up and, you know, I just, I, I hope that that is not an effective. And women are fallible too. And the accusers in the Me Too movement can be fallible and they're not all, they're not all truthful. I mean, they're not, you know, look back at, there have been so many examples over history. You know, there, there was the UVA case, that, which turned out to be not true. The there Duke was Lacrosse the case. Duke lacrosse case in which, you know, this woman was going to put three guys in jail for the rest of their lives. She was making the whole thing up. Not every accuser is telling the truth. It, right? That's the truth. But people who have problem with women rising up against a patriarchy will use this to exploit you know, their point and to say that the, the, the movement itself has no val validity and that's completely wrong too. Um, okay, let's turn the page because there's there's other news today. We've been following what's been happening with the Miss America pageant. Have you guys heard about, right? Like Miss America is like a hot mess right now. Um, basically what happened you was- You mean the pageant, not the actual Miss America? No, no, not the actual okay, Miss America. Just no, the pageant just itself okay. is having serious issues, right? Okay. They're having issues um, because the reigning Miss America has come out against the the chairwoman of the pageant, Gretchen Carlson, who I used to work with at Fox, and her second in command, saying they've been bullying her for a year, they've been silencing her voice, that Gretchen secretly wants to be Miss America in perpetuity, and won't let the real Miss America go out and do any press, ba 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 ba. Well, this morning, Miss America, and Gretchen denies all that, and so does her number two. This morning, Miss Cara Mund, or Miss America, apparently went rogue. Um, and as the anchor on GMA pointed out, breached her contract by going on GMA, and ABC is going to carry the pageant, and had another message on this, um, standing by her charges. Here's a clip. When the letter leaked out, I was nervous what would happen. I was scared I'd be called a liar, and I was. Um, but at the same time, there's over 21,000 people who signed the petition. There's 33 states. There's former Miss Americas. And so I want her to know that, you know, she's stronger than she thinks she is, and I really hope that the support I've had will carry with her. You're in breach of contract just by being here this morning. Are you scared that they might dethrone you before the pageant? Possible, possible. But at the same time, you know, there's so much more about doing what's right than what the crown. She was asked what her message is to the next Miss America. And she was, that's why she was saying, she, I want her to know she's stronger than, than she is. But she Got stood it. by all of her charges. The, the scathing letter she had written that to her, quote, sisters, other Miss Americas, um, that went public. And they want... She stands by her demand that, uh, you know, she be treated better. And, mm. and the, the criticisms by all these like, 20,000 people signing a petition and um, uh, all these states coming out saying these two women need to go. Uh, you know, I don't like putting my colleagues on the spot, says Craig Melvin before he puts a colleague on the spot. You know Gretchen Carlson. Some of the stuff that she claims, do you find it believable? Oh my gosh, you are the worst. <laughs> I, Can I not interview the interviewer? Is I that just meet the press. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you, you read some now of you this. Know how Bill Clinton felt when Craig was asking him all those questions. <laughs> No, you're not, you're not going to touch it. Listen, I have no idea what Gretchen has done at the Miss America pageant. Okay. Um, no idea. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> that. <laughs> Wait, I'm having a good time. <laughs> but we can all agree, that you're right, the pageant itself, hot mess right We've now. We've never seen anything like this. And now I the know. question is whether she's going to get dethroned between now and the time well, when she's got to do an, the wave yeah, and the goodbye. Let me just, can we get an audience shot? I, I, raise your hand if you're into Miss America still. Are you still like the pageant? Raise your hand. Well, yes, you do. That one lady in the pink. Not too many. <laughs> Are you going to watch this pageant? Raise your hand if you're going to watch it. You're going to watch raise it now without any yeah. bathing suit competition and where you get to choose your own evening wear. Like you could be in PJs if you want. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a 
just kind of I, the reason I ask. I mean, I'm, I like Miss America. I think it's fun. You know, um, I you always watch, watch Miss America. America. <laughs> is I it don't on believe past, you? Okay, is it on past eight o'clock at night? No, I do not. I go to bed early. I have no life. Um, but anyway, I just I think maybe the maybe the time has. I don't know. I feel like people aren't as into it as they once I were. I feel like if you if you're want to get people to watch Miss America, you need to you need to spice it up somehow. You need to, don't need to make it more boring. Let's, 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 how do you, how do you spice well, it up? Me, I was about to say, let me ask the follow-up. Uh, why, why don't we have them debate? Like, why don't we give them something like NAFTA, go. Like, that is so, the most Megyn Kelly answer yes. you could ever have. We can Douglas style debate right? in Miss America pageant. And, and do it in the bathing suits. And then it's like, yeah, I have it all. Deal. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Bring it. Well, they say it's a scholarship competition. I think a debate, a debating society is a great yeah. idea. You oh, can yeah. really see who was worthy of a scholarship. Let's make it big Lincoln Douglas debates. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one will watch that. They oh. say they should okay. debate NAFTA. <laughs> yeah. It's like the most boring topic you could have picked. But with bathing suits. Yeah. Are you following? Oh. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I get it. No, I have no, I have no <laughs> suggestion. I don't watch pageants at all. I do if they're if I'm channel surfing. I would watch the bathing suit competition because I feel inspired by these women who are like, they got the rocket bodies and then they're smart and they're out there working for the, the scholarship. It's like, wow, look at her go. Yeah. And then I like have another sip of wine and more <laughs> granola. Um, okay. I, I should tell you that in response to Kara Munn's original letter, the one that ripped, you know, Gretchen and the, the organization, the Miss America organization said it does support Kara and that her letter contained mischaracterizations and unfounded accusations. Gretchen also responded to the letter on Sunday saying, I've never bullied or silenced you. In fact, I've acknowledged to you and your parents many times the organization understands your frustrations. Okay, we'll leave it at that, and we will come back in just a minute uh, to find out what my friend's worst fears are. Mine Ooh. is about being asked private information from my Fox News years. <laughs> <laughs> Here's this happens. Here's this happens. Okay, welcome back. We are here with NBC. Savannah Guthrie and Craig Melvin, and we're going to get to fears in a minute because we're doing a lot of fear today. There's a story from Illinois that we wanted to bring up. An eight-year-old girl was out by herself walking her little Maltese puppy, Marshmallow. Aww. Then someone called the cops because she was walking the dog by herself. Right? Now, would you let your eight-year-old walk your dog around the block by herself or himself? It ended up in the hands of the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. They investigated this mom... They said the allegations ultimately were unfounded, but that mother has since spoken up, saying her daughter was near their home, that the mom could see the little girl from the mom was in the backyard the entire time, and that this was a ridiculous encroachment on her parental rights to, to decide when her child is capable of walking around the block by herself. My, my parents would still be in prison. Yeah. If, <laughs> totally. If, if it were illegal in Columbia, South Carolina, to, to, like, not have your eight-year-old do anything by Within himself. Within sight. Right. Yeah. And when well, you're talk. younger, I grew up in the 70s, okay, yeah, in Arizona. Same. My mom was like, go out and play. I'll see you at dinner time. <laughs> right. Don't come back. Right. And she rang a cowbell. <laughs> that was like, you can come back now. <laughs> right. And it was like 120 degrees, and we didn't wear sunscreen either. My mom was like, get yes. out. Yes. Get out. Come back at 6, and don't bother me in between unless you're bleeding. Yes. Like, oh, sure. okay. Yeah. All right. Honestly, like, I, I realize that it's a dangerous world. It was dangerous then, too. Yeah. Bad things can happen. But in, typically in our country, we've left it up to the parent to judge where they live, whether it's safe, what the risks are, yeah. because we trust parents who we presume have a love relationship with their children to make the best decision for them. I will say that if a Department of Children and Family Services receives a call, it is their duty to look into it. And I think they had to look into it. I don't know who made the call. Someone called the That's cops. That's the issue. Well, the that's cops. the issue. It's less about, like, once it's in the system, what are they supposed to do? Blow it off? What if it was something? Yeah. I think that they didn't have any choice at that point to at least look into it. My issue is with who's the nosy neighbor who made right. the call? Right. I know. Who calls the cops? I know. Because Sister think... Girl is walking Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Truly. Truly. Right. Right. Exactly. Just... Don't keep an eye on her. Call the cops on the neighbor or say, are you sure she's okay? Or ask, if, I don't know, calling the and cops. Not to generalize your stereotype, but it has been my experience that if the dog's name's Marshmallow, it's probably a decent neighborhood. You know, probably no, no reason to worry about the eight-year-old. What names would be problematic? Like, Killer. Yes. The dog's name is Killer. You know, or Rabid, or, yeah. you know. 
Something the dog smoking a cigarette. <laughs> you would know. Calls for the dog. Good. Big marshmallow is probably going to be okay with yeah. you. Good to know. These yeah. are parents out there. Keep an eye. Um, all right. So today on the show, we're talking about fear, overcoming uh -oh. fear. We, last week, we had these two amazing guests, both of whom had near-death experiences, both of whom said their number one lesson from them was not to be motivated by your fear, but to overcome your fear in life. Yeah. So today, we're doing a show about that. Cool. Biggest fears. Now, can I start with you? Sure. Because I'm afraid of you. <laughs> interrogated by Megan Kelly and try to live my life so I never have to be because <laughs> you are fierce what do you mean he was the interrogator today I, know, I was like a kitten I was like little marshmallow <laughs> <laughs> what is your greatest fear that's a good question it's, it's not I don't think me I know what it is because we have a clip uh, oh okay can well we, you yes. want to show the clip sure is frogs it's frogs okay can we show the clip frogs. I know watch I know It's so mean. She starts chasing oh, me around. No. OMG. Okay. So is it a genuine fear? I, I Look at this. It's I'm huge. I'm literally, I'm sweating. She started chasing me around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I was like, please, I beg you. I Why? beg you. Why frogs? I don't know. I don't know. Not I a negative because when, well, experience? I will. My, I have talked to my mom about this because I'm like, what's the deal here? This is weird. In Arizona, I grew up and there would be like monsoon storms and these Colorado river toads would come out and they were really loud. Like they were, it was With almost like they were like sheep. It was like, oh, <laughs> you know? and I always felt like they were outside my window. And I have a very early memory of my, I was like probably five or something. And my dad said, why are you still in bed? Like, get out of bed. It's time to get out. And I was like, daddy, not until you check under my bed and see if there are frogs there. Aww. I know. And he, he checked. He said, there are no frogs. That's why you live in New York City. Yes. Now. And then he carried me yeah. out because I thought there were frogs. There's no wildlife of any kind know, other than weird. the rats, which are like pets. No. Do you have a big fear? Lots of fears. Too many to, to mention. It's not really me, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the <laughs> yeah. top five. Top, top five. five. Bats. You don't have any fears? Bats. Bats. Oh, I hate bats. I'm definitely afraid of bats. Bats are full of germs, too. Yeah. That's a good fear. See? They ask me one. I'm like, I don't really have a thing. I'm like, I guess roaches? But isn't everybody afraid of roaches? Yeah. Everyone loves roaches. Like, I mean, who, who doesn't put that on the yeah. list? I don't have anything particularly. Frogs are scarier than roaches. <laughs> no, just so you know. Really? Not sure. Not sure if that's true. Uh, challenge. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pleasure. It Great was. to see you both. Can't, I really, I think we should do it weekly just so I can see the fear in your eyes. <laughs> 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 All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.